She never was. That's the game we always play. So I thought, well, where do I see these numbers? On automobile license plates, on uh, phone numbers, on addresses. And so I associated Abraham and Jerry with 666. <laughs> and when I was uh, driving home from work one day, and I was just thinking about this, and it all came, I was like, oh, this is great, this is great. In my rear view mirror, I saw a Lamborghini. And it came up, and I thought, there it was, 666. And I heard Jerry laugh just so brilliantly. He was just laughing. And then I said, seriously, a Lamborghini? And the next car that went by was a Honda with 666 on it. And I said, is this better? Whatever you want. <laughs> That's right, whatever you want. Before you go further, we want to comment about that. Because in light of what we've been talking about here, about your readiness for what's in your vortex, about how your inner being calls you through your path of least resistance. And so those alignment of numbers, of course, as you're seeking alignment, your inner being is always offering you evidence of your alignment. And so numbers are around all the time. And there are a lot of those combinations of numbers in a lot of different ways around you. But when you rendezvous with them, that's a very strong indication that you are in the receiving mode. That's what it really means. That your path of least resistance is resistant free enough that you can receive the impulse to rendezvous with something that you consider alignment. You see, so it's not talking about when the number is presented to you or who's presenting it or how it's presented because things that you want are being offered to you all the time. Those numbers and more, 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 more. It's an indication of you being in the receptive mode. That's what we like most about that. That's why so often, if you care and if you've got a digital clock, it works better with a digital <laughs> clock. Can wake up at one 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 two 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 three 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 four four four. It's fun. It's total fun. Yeah. So the next thing I want to ask is about inner being. I've been enjoying uh, your work for 17 years. Just I love it. I'm just passionate about it. And I've heard so many things said. And one of the things was talking about how when we dream, our focus is different than the collective dream of all of humanity that creates reality. Well, you create your own dream. Yes. And so it is specific to you. Yes. Yeah. But the creation of physical reality is all of us are contributing to yeah. it and have focused it to it. But point. any one of you who perceives it is really winnowing it to be what you perceive it to be. There are not two of you that perceive collective reality in the same way you think you do but you don't perception is such a significant concept to understand and so what i want to understand about inner being is the story of jerry and esther and tracy i believe who in philadelphia all came to the same they were in boston boston okay you please tell it better but the idea it was early in their relationship with us. In fact, Esther was not even receiving us very clearly. She was still sort of nodding and spelling letters in the air. And sometimes the typewriter, in other words, she was not really translating us effectively as she is now. It was really early on. And they were going to Boston. She could receive things to some degree, but not like now. And as they were landing, we said to them, you're going to like Boston. It's where your last incarnation was, which surprised them because we never talked about those kinds of things. And so right away, they're in the limousine on their way to the hotel. And Esther announces that to Jerry and Tracy. Oh, I'm really going to like this because this was my last place of physical. And we said to her, all of you, she said, apparently it was all of our last place of physical. So now... Who was I? 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 And we said to Esther, and she said to them, when you stand before the statue that is you, you will know. Oh, a statue. This is good news. And so it's one o'clock in the morning by the time they get to their hotel. They dumped everything off and began roaming around the streets of Boston. They're down by Faneuil Hall and in, in all of that area. And they came across a statue and another and another. And when they stood before the statue of Samuel Adams, all of them in unison said, I was Samuel Adams. <laughs> and then they looked at each other, get away from my statue. <laughs> 
And then once they had an opportunity and got back where they could converse more comfortably, we explained to them that all of them were of that energy lineage that is now within the three of them. And at one time, that non-physical part of them was focused there, which was the first time that any of them understood this collective consciousness, this stream of consciousness, this personality of consciousness, this never-ending unfolding that is you. And then whenever Esther saw Jerry making trouble, she said, just like Samuel Adams. <laughs> and he would shake his finger right back at her. Yes. And so my question further on that is the person who was Jesus, was there a collective, multi consciousness. A collective consciousness focused Certainly. through that being? Certainly. Okay. And go ahead. Certainly. And so many of you streaming the same energy. Yes. Let's just jump ahead a little bit okay. and explain it to you in the most current way for you to understand it. Esther understood it so much more clearly once Jerry made his transition because, first of all, she couldn't find him for a while because she kept looking for him where he isn't. And she kept even looking for him in the non-physical vortex. She was looking for him where he isn't because he had taught her who he was. But now without any resistance whatsoever he is now something different and so it took her a little while to really hone in in a consistent way on who he now is because he left behind so many physical characteristics that you pick up along your physical trail once she began to realize that he was always aware of her and he would catch her at unsuspecting moments because in moments of missing him or in moments of longing for him or wondering about him, she couldn't find him. So it was in those clear moments, she began to realize that he was with her all the time, not just him, but so many others, so many. In other words, anything that she was focused upon in this moment, non-physical who has interest is right there too. This cadre, that's Wayne Dyer's word, first time Esther heard it. This cadre of non-physical energy, all focused with you in your now, you see. And so the thing that humans want to think, as we tell stories like this, is that you come in a sort of linear way. Here you are, and then somebody else comes, and then somebody else comes. And there's energy that is handed off like a baton to one, and then another, and another. And it's not like that at all. It's that all consciousness continues to exist. And those like Jerry, and those like Jesus, and those like Buddha, and those like Samuel Adams, and those, and those, and those, and those, who have been here, who have focused, who have wanted, who have put things into their vortex, once they reemerge, they are still tending to the vortex that they have created and so as you feel the inspiration of that they are all still interested in you you see this ongoing eternalness is not just about the physicalness of you coming forward it's about the non-physicalness that is coming forward with those of you who are physical there are many 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 more we can't even give numbers to the more that are here with you all here today in this gathering your parents' parents and their 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 parents and all of those teachers and students of the things that you are interested in all focused here with you. Your now could be so much more dynamic than you allow it to be because you are approaching your perspective in such a linear way, in such a singular way, in such a it's only me way, in such a I need to prove my worthiness way, in such an unworthy way because you need to prove your worthiness way. That so many of you are not allowing anything close to receiving the fullness of the infinite intelligence that is focused to you and through you all the time, you see. A new baby does not need to be born in order for consciousness to come forth into this time-space reality. One day, not too long after Jerry made his transition, Esther and her grandchildren, Kate and Luke, and their mother, Tracy, were on the golf cart running around the property in Texas. And they were playing a game. Let's go over there. A sort of treasure hunt that Esther had planned out. Let's go over there and then let's go way over there. And so it was from one end of the property way over there and way over there and way over there. It's about 40 acres. And so they're going over there and they're going over there and on trails. And Esther's trying to brush them off with the bushes and having as much fun with them as she can. And taking them to a new place. And every place they went, no matter how far they were, the roadrunner was standing there like Bugs Bunny waiting for them. <laughs> waiting for them. And then Luke said, he was very young at the time, six maybe. I think Jerry's using that roadrunner's eyes to find us. 
which was exactly what was going on. The beasts of your planet are often the receivers of non-physicals, not just you. They're much more open, you see. That's why the birds bring you messages and so on and so on and so on. We took a little tangent there, but we wanted no, to put perfect. it in this powerful place. So now? So now, you always talk about 20 or 30 lifetimes that we've put into our escrow. There's so much there. And we say that to you to let you understand you don't need to worry about it petering out. And you don't need to go stir up trouble to make it more either. <laughs> you naturally will continue the evolution of that which you are. But it's big and mostly not very consciously tapped by you. And so when we, like Jerry, return to non-physical, yeah. and we have this 20 to 30 lifetimes, yeah. and we are... Of course, focusing when people remember us and recall us or of the things well, that we don't mean literally that you're going to come back 20 or 30 times because it'll be far more no, than that because no. it's so fun. Yeah, no. But we just want you to know that that statement is only to define the potential that is there in readiness for you now, not over a period of 20 or 30 years. There's that much ready for you to decipher to receive now. We're just wanting you to get a sense of the potential of joyous receiving that is ready to meet you now when you're ready to meet it and so we have this incredible potential and we as abraham is a vibrational family so we are all there and you talk about the two ends of the stick is there the same two ends of the stick about then choosing from the everything we've collected to come into the physical give us more well, I'm trying to understand just this concept of just the incredible variety because of the variety, the contrast we've lived that we put and then we get to celebrate with our vibrational families and you say we get to, we'll experience it all if we choose in a vibrational form. And then how, how is it, because we're the leading edge, focused here how is it that we then choose again is it just something that captures our well before you go there we don't want you to miss the best part that you built up to here is all this non-physical what you're going to call potential what we call reality already achieved it's potential in the seeing it hearing and smelling and tasting and touching it but it's already achieved in terms of its vibrational you might even say completion or beingness and so when you accept the realness of all of that and you master that step three so that you're chronically feeling good and in that receptive mode and even though you dip into contrast it doesn't rattle your cage you are, you are in that compassionate state of being where you are loving yourself anyway. So you're consistently in that high flying place and now you are receiving impulses and ideas. You're in that sweet spot where you're translating this into rendezvous and awarenesses and understandings and conversations and vitality and zest and love for life. That's what you came for, you see. In moments and, like this. And those non-physicals that we've been talking about are right there having those experiences with you. But we are having those experiences whether you are with us having them or not. Every now and again, you tap in and you feel the fullness of what we are feeling. And we want you to understand that what is non-physical, what has been before and what is non-physically projecting into your physical experience now, we are thriving and reveling in the expansion of this time-space reality. And of course, loving it when you get up to speed and have a moment with us. But whether you do or not, we're still tending to the things that matter to us. That's why your earth spins in its orbit while you never give it a thought. That's why your blood pumps through your body while you don't think about it at all. That's why the food stays rampant on your planet while you don't truck it in from other planets. And on and on and on. In other words, well-being is huge and tended to by supreme consciousness of no resistance. And when you join that consciousness, then and only then do you feel